Welcome to Peace Vision. We are a portal for positive change. And there's something going on that we all need to be aware of, and it's called biopiracy. And with me today is our environmental reporter from the West Coast. Welcome, Eric Crown. Hey, hello. It's nice to see you again, John. Yeah, so tell me about, you know, I'm thinking of piracy. I'm envisioning pirates, but something else is going on here, and it's pretty serious, actually. Tell us about it. Well, you know, it's, it's a term, it's another kind of hidden term. Biopiracy in its simplest explanation is when somebody goes in and either takes cultural knowledge from a tribe or a physical plant itself from a tribe and the tribe that has taken care of these particular plants for medicinal reasons, goes back to the Western culture, patents the design of the plant and then owns the plant. It seems a little crazy, right? That seems pretty unethical, but it, unfortunately, I, I, I believe anything in this environment. <laughs> well, you know, uh, one of the most common examples, but the weirdest example is turmeric. Um, that was actually patented by the University of Mississippi in 1995. Um, now, turmeric, think, tell people what that is and, and where it comes from. Turmeric, the uh, spice uh, originating, I believe, in India and uh, most of like one of the staples of, of Indian food and a lot of actually Middle Eastern um, recipes. So right. it, it's, a, it's a cultural spice, you know, um, but it no longer is. Now it is owned, patented um, by University of Mississippi. Uh, another crazy example is Chanel number no. five. It was a scent that was discovered in the Amazon and they smuggled out one of the flowers. They patented the smell now it is Chanel number five. Now, none of this maybe doesn't seem that important, but what we have to consider is when you think about the amount of money that these companies take patenting natural products uh, and not giving anything back to these environments, we're seeing the destruction of these local communities now through the Amazon, through India, you know, uh, through a lot of areas where the biopiracy runs rampant. Um, personally, for me, uh, as somebody that battles cancer. I've discovered that around 25% of all medicines that we use come from plants. And the majority of those have been through biopiracy. Uh, over 60% of chemo drugs come from natural plants. And with less than 3% of the Amazon being explored, you have to imagine that there's a huge natural pharmacopoeia sitting there for us to understand and, and, and to go into, but instead we watch it burn and get torn down for buildings and uh, we're watching the tribes disappear as, as part of that. Um, so biopiracy has massive effects to the environment around it. Um, now a lot of laws have been passed and, and it's, it's not ethical, but the National Cancer Institute here will still look at, at um, things that are brought over from there even if they're not properly permitted. Um, and there, there is a new permitting law that's gone into effect through Brazil where a majority of the biopiracy happens. But India now is just in 2000 is starting to, to try to, you know, um, to, to patent their own things. Now, you know, sometimes they can patent things for good. Um, for example, CBD. CBD was patented uh, by the government so that nobody could patent it, which I think is a great move because we can't allow the private ownership of natural resources like that anymore, you know? But if somebody is concerned and said, yeah, that all makes sense and I don't want to see this happen anymore, what can they do or what group can, how can their voice be heard? That, yeah, fantastic. You know, we're all about solutions and ways to try to fight biopiracy. Now, there's ways you can fight it in your own backyard, and I'm glad you brought this up. One fantastic example is bottled water. Bottled water is biopiracy. Fantastic example is Nestle trying to take water out of Ginny Springs. Now we know that Nestle would pay $115 to the state in order to withdraw all the water they want, um, something like a million gallons a day, triple the amount that the previous company was operating under. And how much are you saying they're paying? $115 is what Nestle would pay to Florida to withdraw that 1 million gallons a day. So. That's a pretty good buy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. And so it's, you know, I think the technical $115 uh, perhaps makes it not biopiracy, but it, uh, it, it, it seems to be, you know, because they are just destroying the local environments um, 
not to mention the amount of plastic that they are using, which of course brings us back to revolutionary routine, never buy plastics if you can avoid it. But you know, it, it's a very crazy thing. So in your own backyard, you can take a look at what natural resources are being stripped for the use of businesses. And you know, you can find a lot of local organizations um, that fight whatever's happening. And generally, if you just look up water contamination with your zip code, you will find groups because the beauty of it is, like I always say, there's more of us and we understand cooperation is the key. And if we all get together, we can change the future. And by doing that, each of us individually in our backyard makes a difference. And that individual story, that individual fight becomes a giant worldwide fight and battle for us to maintain access to our natural resources. So well, it does it, bring up the, um, the group Rights of, Nat Rights, Rights of Nature, which uh, you may have heard or been involved with, but they're fighting for the rights of nature so that we can all have the right for clean water. So I look at it not so much as that nature has its own rights, that we have a right to live in a clean environment. Isn't that what that group is really all about? Yes, I think so. I think they're a fantastic group and they have done amazing work throughout the entire nation. And uh, they really try to create, you know, because we do live in a world where corporations have been granted personhood, um, but the environment hasn't. So if there's going to be an even legal battle, you have to have equal, you know, equal footing, I believe. Um, you know, now there was, I think it's a 1927 law in Florida, for example, that states that all groundwater belongs to the state. Um, so they do have that right to say no. And a group like the, um, the Rights of Nature movement, especially in Florida, they're fighting so hard right now to make sure that those groundwaters cannot be sold out by the state. And, you know, especially there's so many examples of, of uh, you know, especially in Florida where the water is being polluted and there are physical, um, you know, sicknesses that are coming from this. So, and again, somebody that's battling cancer, you know, I think anything we can stop getting into our water, uh, we need to before it gets in there because we can't deal with it down the road. I had one other question for you, kind of as an aside, but it's my understanding that when you go to the store and you buy bottled water, you think, oh, this is great, this is bottled water, but there's really no regulations at all uh, pertaining to the quality of that water, is there? Exactly, exactly. They, they face no regulation. Um, and they can completely, they can label it as anything. Uh, you know, they just have to go through a simple purification process. And that's their only um, requirement as far as the bottling goes. Now, there's no oversight <laughs> to that. And there is no, there is no governing body that, that watches for it. So there really is, and I believe that they've done a bunch of tests and even found that certain brands were just the same as the tap water. Because tap water has you know, um, forever chemicals, PFAS. It has, you know, generally amounts of radiation. It has mercury, polonium, you know, um, chromium. It has all kinds of na nasty, nasty things in the water. And when we're buying bottled water, even if they're putting that through a simple, just cleaning process, it's not gonna do anything um, to remove these really harmful chemicals. So it's kind of like a Band-Aid on a broken bone. You know, it's never going to, to really address the problem. Yeah, and I'd love to know who's working on that to make some kind of legislation to where there are standards set for the water that we buy and trust as being safe. It would be a, a fantastic move forward. You know, there's some great groups that are trying to push it uh, right now. You know, it's a very difficult time because a lot of the protections given to water have been placed on hold. So, uh, you know, at the moment, there's a lot more groups that are now starting to pop up because I think we're finding that ultimately, you know, us as citizens, we are the missing link. We're the ones that can help where governments have their, their limits, you know, and a group like Rights of Nature, they are the ones that are fighting for us in, in a courtroom. You know, we, we fight out in the streets, you know, we let people know what we think, but these guys are in there um, trying to change the laws. And ultimately that is what's gonna create the uh, protections that we're gonna need. Otherwise we're not gonna have access to clean water anymore unless we're buying it from a source that can't even prove to us that it's clean. Well, it seems like we need to give those kind of organizations our full support and let our politicians know that this matters to us. Yes, definitely. You know, Rights of Nature is fantastic. Uh, another one that I follow a lot is fightforzero.org. Uh, that organization has been fighting against forever chemicals and PFAS in the tap waters 
and it's another and they actually have a lot of links to many other areas you can also check out Aaron Brockovich's website and they tested the tap water in everywhere throughout the US and you can get your own local water rating there uh, ewj.org fantastic they have an interactive map you go in you type your you know your zip code and you can see the levels of contamination and what's actually in your local waterways and so you know it's really cool like we live in an amazing time where we have access to everybody that's out there fighting the same fight as us so it's it's a beautiful time to be connected well knowledge is power obviously and you bring a lot to the table thank you for all you do eric crown okay we'll see you soon thank you john thanks